shit not good Hey guys, welcome to the Gig Economy Podcast, episode 188. On our way to 200, which we'll hit this year, 12 weeks away. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. That is crazy. I don't know, we'll have to do something special. Oh, definitely something special. 200. Well guys, thanks so much. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about, would you rather, fill in the blank, lift us kicking drivers <laughs> off comfort? Not me. And Uber cash outs are more and people are losing their mind for some reason for 40 cents more. And I don't know why. So we'll talk about that. How's it going, Larry? It's going well, man. Uh, Sounds like we're both a little bit under the weather tonight, but we are here and ready to talk gig work. Yes, sir. I said to Larry, if you make me laugh and I start coughing, it's 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 all downhill from there. For whatever reason, I got a little cough and I've been just real drained today. So Probably is good that I was out with a bunch of old people today running them around town. So that, that there that you go. Seems to there track. you go. That's what you need. So, uh, everything you want to know about the show, go to gigeconomyshow.com for our newsletter, any kind of news that's going around in the gig economy. And then um, also you can download the podcast there. It, uh, where, you know, you can download it anywhere, but if you go to the website, you can download it there too. I want to mention our Patreon members Samson, Steve, Bud, Omar, Delivery Cats, Jamie, Frank, Nate. Uh, John, Tom, and Jim. It's John McCallion's birthday a couple of days ago. And uh, so happy birthday, John. I haven't seen him on for a while. But if you want to join the shenanigans, the last podcast, extra podcast we recorded last week, it was a shit show. So enjoy that. It was a lot of downtime, <laughs> me trying to download software on my computer to gamble. It was it was crazy. So you'll have to check it out. Gabe joined us. But if you want to join us, go to patreon.com slash the GigaCon podcast. Gets you an extra podcast a month, exclusive piece of merch, a.k.a. a T-shirt, uh, ad-free show. And then that's the $10 tier. And if you want to uh, do the tip you in the app, that's $5 to say thank you for bringing you this amazing content. You get a uh, pre-show banter, which also can be very funny uh, at times. So go ahead and join that. Um, And the Telegram group, of course, this is where you learn things about your uh, neighbors from down under in New Zealand that you didn't really know about. And she shares a picture that you were shocked by. Not because the picture was shocking as who it shared it. Uh, I, I'm takes quite a bit for uh, for me to be shocked, but uh, so yeah, we'd love for you to join us. If you download Telegram and then you go ahead and uh, click the link in the description, and that will bring you to the chat. So it's an adult group, right, Janet? Uh, stories from the road. Larry and I both have nothing. Absolutely yeah, I nothing. have not driven a lot. Uh been here taking care of my son who had surgery last week um, yeah so how's he doing staying home a lot. he's doing well he's just been hanging out you know hanging out up there in the bonus room him and his cat he brought his cat garfield with him and uh, nice. so been hanging out with them and uh you know just kind of taking care of him have been out driving a few times but mostly during the day and didn't really have anything crazy happen during the day yeah monday and tuesday I did gig work i was trying to make a hundred a day and i did i did pretty good on monday tuesday was a little bit of a stretch which at least in my market, Tuesday is the slowest day of the week for gig really? work. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, i just been doing food delivery. I think I did one comfort ride. Like, I, I ran comfort, but it just wasn't getting any requests for it. So, did did some Walmart, did some DoorDash, did some Uber Eats, those kind of things. I, I need to do a Walmart Spark. I haven't done a Spark, and it's been at least six months. Well, I actually got a shop, which is so... Oh, wow. Yeah. So it used to be when I first started, I shopped all the time. It was big bucks. I mean, it was mm-hmm. minimum $20 per order. Yeah. And you controlled your own destiny, which is nice because you get to immediately go and shop at where yeah, when you're picking. Take off and go. Yeah. When you're do- waiting for like an order, you you could wait 15, 20 minutes for that yeah. thing. Um, so, yeah, I did a little bit of that, but um, it was nice to kind of shop a little bit uh, and make money, you know, 20 bucks and like, you know. 30 minutes. So it was kind of nice, but, um, so I don't have any other stories, but I do have a thirsty goose here. Uh, so I want to show you what would be a thirsty goose. Here is, tell us, here's the mouth and and it's a seal in the back. So the thirsty goose is something comes in this nice little pouch. Oh, and you pull it out of fancy. And then this is your goose. This is where you go pee pee right in here. 
And then you take the lid, which is sealed, which once it, you... I can't do it. I got to look at it. <laughs> um, there, there, you screw it like this. There it is. And there, there it is. It's a little crooked, but... Um, yeah, so the Thirsty Goose. This is where if you are a man... And no offense to women, you could buy it for your husband, or you could rig it up for. You'd have to add one more piece of equipment for this for you. Yeah, I just, think so. Just not going to work. Uh, but yeah, you can go potty in it, and then it doesn't look like a Gatorade bottle. Now that being said, it's hard, so it's not collapsible. So I don't know where the fuck you're going to put this in your right car. up on the dash. I mean, right up on the dash. I mean, look at like kind of like. Just look at compared to the microphone. Like it's pretty big. Yeah. Oops. That's, <laughs> Sorry. That, yeah, you're not gonna be able to tuck that in, you know, in, inside your little door pocket or uh, no, this console. will not. I mean, not I don't know. Your this, console. <laughs> I don't even it's it's not gonna fit in the door pocket. So uh John says, Jason, mine won't fit. Does it come in a bigger size? Uh no, it definitely comes in a smaller size if you need that, but um <laughs> mine won't fit. Wait a minute. I didn't even look at that. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can't fit in that? Just for uh, scale. Come on. <laughs> Anyways, happy uh, birthday, John. I appreciate you. Hey, I, happy I, birthday, John. I just hey, said Jerry. I hadn't seen you in a long while. But anyways, we are now ambassadors. So if you go to the description, you can click on the link and save 10% by using the Gig Economy podcast. Um, so I will be giving one of those away. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. We'll probably save one maybe for the picnic or yeah. Larry, you can have it too. I don't freaking care. I mean, I'm not, I probably won't even use mine, honestly. Yeah. I, I don't know that I would. Uh, I've always just stopped at the restroom at a restroom somewhere or if it, you know, yeah, just. Well, I'll pee in behind I, a I, bush or something. Well, I mean, if it fit in my, if I had a place to put it, I would use right. it. But I'm not getting yeah. out of my car and putting it in the trunk every time. I'm just right. I'm right. gonna stick to my exactly. Gatorade bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Maybe maybe we can get them as a sponsor. Well, I mean, we kind of are. We're ambassadors. We get we get ten percent back every time you buy something. So no, I'm at Gatorade. Oh God. <laughs> Passionate, not yeah, not a sponsor. What is it? Not yet. a sponsor yet. There yet. it is. Uh, there's another show I listen to that say uh, passionate, but not, I don't know. It's passionate, but something. But anyways. Um, all right. So before we jump into gig economy in the news, since we don't have really other stories, just want to, uh, again, talk about Kim's side money plans. Great. Uh, YouTuber has just started a podcast. Go to your podcast uh, application and just search Kim side money plans. And that way you can download her podcast. She podcasts once a week or live streams. Well, she live streams more than once a week, um, yeah. but um, the, she uploads a podcast once a week. But she's always like, um, I'm, I want to do this. I want to set up my car somehow with some GoPros or something like that and do some more content. But she'll do like she's doing a catering order. She'll live stream that, which I yeah. think is kind of cool. Um, yeah, that is neat. But um, yeah, I definitely would uh, it would like you to go download her podcast because she's trying to grow the podcast. She's killing it on YouTube. So I mean, you should subscribe to her on YouTube too. But uh, full time sure. gig worker does a lot of DoorDash, those kind of things. So all right, so gig economy in the news. So I don't have an article or video. There is a video, but it. It's kind of janky, but again, we're talking about Minnesota um, and, you know, the or Minneapolis. They're pulling out May 1st and Minnesota drivers union say they have a solution if Uber and Lyft leave Minneapolis. And they basically just talked about just different things that they can do, um, you know, and I think it's it's kind of a push. It's kind of an opportunity for them, right. To like, all right, this is a good time for us to really push the driver union. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know much of, uh, about this driver union in Minnesota, but, um, one thing I did see, and this isn't really related to the driver union, but I, uh, they've already said to, if you rent a Tesla from Hertz that you need to turn it in before May 1st, you know, they're yeah. like, Hey, we're done. We're out of here. So, it doesn't doesn't sh seem like it's going to be slowing down at all, or they're gonna. It's kind of. I don't know if it's a bluff or not. It seems to be moving full steam ahead. I mean, and I guess you you would have to be that way if if you know if you're not. If it was a parent, you were just 
talking and not doing anything, then I think that, you know, that would very much weaken their position. Yeah. Um, so I think they've got to play it that way um, and make it look like that they're hundred percent ready to, you know, ready to pull out of Minneapolis. If that's, if that's true. what it takes. That's true. Again, I kind of hope that it happens just to see what happens, just to kind of learn from it. And yeah, and, it'd be interesting. Um, so yeah, um, I will share, actually, I'll just grab this link. And if you want to watch it, on your own time, uh, I'll throw that in here. It's an okay video, but yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, introducing a union is like in my, in my W2 job, I'm pro union, but as a gig worker, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it, you gotta, well, you gotta it, do the context, you know? Well, you it is. I, I'm not like a politician where like, oh, I'm a Democrat, so I have to be union right. or I'm a Republican and I hate unions. I'm just like, what? It, whatever benefits me the most yeah. or my family or the community yeah. around me, I'm going to go with. And I think, you know, the bus union does for me. And then I think just being an independent contractor for for gig work. Yeah, like John said, follow the money. And, and I don't yep. want to say it like I'm coming off being selfish and I don't care about other people. But I mean, that at the end of the day, it's we're paying, we have to pay our bills. Like, right. I mean, we yeah. we, we actually, we love gig work. We love talking about it, right, Larry? But we're, exactly, we do it for money. We're not, yeah, we're, we're not just doing it uh, as a charity. Right. Uh, we are doing it to, to make a little money for sure. Yeah. So, um yeah, so that's that's kind of why I stand on it. Uh, I don't hate you if you want to do it. I don't hate anybody uh, for wanting to do that kind of stuff. It's just it's just not for me. So and we'll stay on top of this Minnesota story um, every week until you know as as it gets closer, and just if there's any news or updates, kind of we'll try to touch on those. Well, yeah, I mean, I swear every week there's a. There's or something. <laughs> a, there's a new article or an update. Yeah. So for sure. So at the beginning we talked about would you rather, and um, you know, because that's a game that my kids used to play in the car. Would you rather, you know, whatever? Would you rather live through a tornado or pull a teeth, uh, pull a tooth out without any, you know, just dumb shit yeah. like that? And it, it, oh yeah, it, it's fun conversation. But uh, yes, this was a little so this different. It's the gig gig economy version. Yeah. Yeah. So would you rather, would you rather a passenger throw up in your car or have sex in your car? And I'd really like to have everybody in the chat answer that. <laughs> let's yeah. See, let's see where it falls. See what people would rather have. I, when I saw uh, it in Reddit, I was like, I love it when like, who would even think of that? He probably saw that his throw up bag and he's like, you know what? This is a good yeah. question. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? For uh, sure. So for you, Larry, what, what, what yeah, I mean, it, it, it you have to know more detail. No, no, as, no, as no variables. <laughs> so, well, what? there's got to be a variable. So it says throw up. I mean, if yeah. they're throwing up in my puke bag, I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, well, of course, <laughs> of course. But no, if they're if they're throwing up all over my car, or somebody's gonna have sex in the car, I uh, I'd probably I'd probably go with them having sex in the car. Hopefully, they're not gonna make as much a mess. <laughs> But you know, I really are neither one. Well, <laughs> of course, that's not a choice. That's not a choice. Janet, yeah, what says about you? Janet says throw up. Um, I'm gonna go probably with sex. Honestly, I mean, even if even if there, I'm gonna. This is gonna be gross. Even yeah. if there was a little mess, it's yeah, much it's, easier to clean up. Yeah, it's not gonna be a, a. I mean, it's gonna be all over the car like that is when they puke. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of hot. I mean, I, I mean, I don't want it to happen in my car, but like, you know, I mean, I'm a man. That's what we have dash cams for, right? I mean, it's kind of hot. Like, I, it would be weird in the moment, but like, if you think yes. about it, like from an outside perspective, I'm just like, it's like the voyeurism or whatever and stuff like that. But um, no, I mean, obviously, if they puked in a puke bag, I will take that all day long. Yeah. So. so, have you had people? Uh, get closer you thought they were heading that way no. I, no i've had i've had i've had one well two that i like i'm gonna have to put a hose on you guys yeah <laughs> you know no and one time the girl even apologized when they got to the apartment she's like i'm so sorry we're back here sucking face like this <laughs> i've actually seen more of the old uh hand down the woman's pants yeah. or up the skirt yeah. more than more than the sucking face but yeah it don't really bother me like i mean if it was starting, like, it, the only time it would be like, all right, y'all, like, if you're kicking my seat or yeah. you're, like, moaning, I'm like, again, 
from an outside perspective, fine. But when you're near my car, that's a little weird. Yeah, it definitely is a little weird. I mean, unless you're going to tip me good, then I'm going to ignore everything. <laughs> you drop a $50 bill on the front seat, I'm hey. just going to be like, don't know who you are. Have fun. Yep. It's all about the, all about the Benjamins. Hey, like John said, follow the money. Follow the money. Yep. Follow That's the money. That's exactly right. So, Traveler didn't answer. He just gave emojis. So. <laughs> Jerry yeah, said, Janet says throw up. Jerry says sex. Janet, so we got throw up. Throw up without a bag, Janet. Do you still stick to your guns on that? I doubt it. So uh, here, let's see this next one. So I am not against women getting whatever like i'm not one of those male guys i'm fine with all that but it's just a weird email it says get an additional 10 percent off by referring a woman to the uber app it says invite friends to earn safely and flexible by driving with uber get up to 275 for each successful referral and an extra 10 percent which actually isn't that much if the referral is 275 so you're getting what an extra 2750 yeah. Um, so it's not that much. It's just, it's kind of weird, right? Isn't that a weird kind of. Yeah. I mean, there, you know, what is it? Um, Lyft has the option now where you can be matched more often with, with a woman driver. And now they're giving more money for women referrals. You know, I understand it's a pretty heavily male dominated, you know, profession, I think. And they're wanting to get more women into it, but, um, yeah, you know, we've talked about it before. I wouldn't I wouldn't want any of my sisters or, or wife or, or daughters or anybody doing ride share. Wait, it's a genitalia <laughs> bonus. I'm actually more fine with the lift system where you can because that's a safety issue, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm fine right. with that. But when we're talking about money, like it's just weird. Like, yeah, hey. it, it does seem weird. And you don't want you... more women because like you said, it's 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 not a it can be an unsafe situations at times. Um, mm -hmm. I can't For imagine sure. being like a super hot woman and Ubering. I mean, the amount of getting hit on from drunk dudes, like, oh yeah, my gosh, it would be every yeah. ride. Oh yeah. And I've told, because I've had, I've had college girls and, and they're like, oh, well, I thought about doing Uber Lyft. I was like, don't, don't do it. Do food delivery. Do something where you don't have to interact with people. Well, they still like, get in food delivery. I see people, but it's more of a chat thing, like in the text yeah. format. Like, you're cute, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to them actually getting groped in the car while they're driving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, Jane, you know, Jamie from Tennessee, you know, she talked about that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's too weird. Guys are too gross. Especially when they're drunk. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what that is. But, hey, Tom, yeah. thanks for coming. Jan says, had a guy being... Being abusive to women so was a difficult situation. I'm not sure what she was talking about there, but yeah, uh, it sounded like a passenger maybe that was being abusive to to a female passenger. I had that one once as well. Oh, like um, oh, I see. So that awkward where he's like yelling yeah. at her. Oh God, yeah. I hate that. Oh yeah, yeah. This guy. I mean, they were both drunk, and he was like, he was like, "You don't shut up. I'm gonna punch you in the face." I was like, "Hold, hold on, dude. Yeah. No, no, nobody hit anybody in this car." Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, there is. A I will drive. I'll drive you straight to the police station. <laughs> yeah, there is a time to intervene when it starts talking about violence or. Like, yeah, and you can tell they're not joking. Yeah, it's. Well, yeah. I've I've had it when they're be like, oh, you know, the guy's talking to the girl like, "You're just such a fucking slut." I'm just like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, a little cringe. Start getting that cringe feel for sure yeah. yeah it's it's a fine line where to step in there it is it is but um all right so an uber and lyft driver explains how sometimes he makes over eight thousand a week doing private rides in miami and fort Lauderdale there for celebrities politicians and sports stars i did not read this so i hope yeah you did. this is uh this is pretty crazy i mean um so he started out doing lyft and uber because he found out he was sick and, and actually thought he was going to pass away. And he oh. said he couldn't really, really um, physically do any other jobs. Yeah. But he got into it and he, he lives down in South Florida. So it's a pretty wealthy area around Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. Um, definitely a lot of money down there. And so he had the idea to start his LL, an LLC and not just do Uber and Lyft, but go ahead and get his you know commercial insurance so he could take private rides because you know, technically, we're not supposed to be taking uh, private money rides if you don't have commercial insurance, because Uber and Lyft and your own insurance is not going to cover that. Right. Um, 
so he did that and started working with another guy who already was kind of established in the business and uh, built up a clientele. He said he does a lot of, uh, he does some NFL people, some kind of famous wealthy people that live in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, talks about, you know, did, did one ride, you know, last week for, it was an hour ride, uh, $700. <laughs> wow. And yeah, they mentioned that they're like 25 times more than what you would normally get paid. I'm like, baloney. That's like a hundred times more than what Uber <laughs> would pay you. I mean, I'm, you know, for an hour, uh, on the highway, you know, I might make about 70 bucks if I'm, you know, going to Nashville. Right. Uh, way more than 25 though. But, um, you know, and, I, and you always wonder, you know, it says he made 200,000. You wonder if they're looking at before he pays all his fees or if that's what he actually netted. Yeah. You know, they, they never tell you all that, but he's got, you know, sounds like he, he does well. He's got two cars. He's got Tesla S model S and he has a Cadillac Escalade. Mm-hmm. Um, Says he spends six thousand dollar a month car payments. Gosh. Yeah. Wait, he's only got two cars. What? What did he get? Like a freaking thirty percent interest rate? Yeah, like I that seems a know. little much for. I mean, good God. Yeah, and it said last year he drove. He said he rarely worked more than forty hours a week, but he drove one hundred twenty three thousand miles last year. Well, you're working more. That's, that's a lot of miles. That's a lot of miles in, in, in less than 40 hours a week. I don't know. I mean, I yeah, guess that's, I figured it out. I, oh, I mean, if you worked, if you did 40, 52 weeks a year, that's 2,365 miles a week, every week for 52 weeks. Something's not adding up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So he says he's got, um, uh, and I, and I bet this, you know, it says he made over, what was it? $8,000. That was probably that was probably one week that he did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They pull that out. But yeah, I mean, you can certainly do that. Get, I, I haven't really checked into commercial insurance to see how much it would be. But, um, you know, I know there's people out there who do that. They get the commercial insurance. They get some nice cars, build up uh, a lot of private rides. If I lived yeah. in a bigger city, if I lived in Nashville, yeah. I would do that. A hundred percent. You got to live I, in a bigger city. This guy, yeah, you got to have him. Some cities got some wealthy people. Um, you know, not the Bowling Green doesn't, but there, it's Bowling Green is not big enough. Just, I don't think to support that. But yeah, if I lived in Nashville or a bigger city than that, I would, I would, hundred percent try that. So I was looking at some as you said uh, some of his statistics. His six thousand yeah. dollar month car payments for his two cars, but he only pays four hundred dollars a month for insurance. Like that, 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 that doesn't seem right. I know for commercial I mean, insurance. I know I pay Escalade. I have three cars and I pay like yeah. two eighty a month for yeah. for insurance. So he's only paying four hundred, but he's paying six thousand dollars a month for car payments. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, you you like I said you never know what to what to trust with these numbers. Uh, that for that seems. That seems slow to me. Well, for I think commercial insurance. Yeah. I think what's great is um, being able to get those clients. Like once you get one yeah. or two, you're set because they're going to refer. You don't even have to advertise anymore. Yeah. But, but, but you and just got to get that foot in the door, yeah. you know? And he talked about it. Like he'd be doing Uber and Lyft and he'd get somebody who's going on, you know, a long trip on Uber. And he would tell him like, okay, look, it's co- how much is this costing you? And say it was costing them three hundred dollars. He's like, okay, well, and, you know, he was going to get like one forty. He's like, okay, I'll do it for two hundred off that. Yeah. And so, and so then those people love you. You're saving them money, right? And he's like, that's how he built up a lot of clients. You know, they were originally Uber uh, or Lyft rides, but he would just undercut them and say, hey, I'll do it for this much less because uh, he still earns more and they pay less. Yeah. I think if I were to be like, okay, I'm doing this uh, full time, I think I would get commercial insurance. I think I would, I would try it for a year and just be like, all right, I'm going to try to hustle as many clients as I can because that's where the money's at, not sticking with Uber and Lyft. I mean, yeah, you can make decent money. I mean, Gabe makes great money in his market, but my point is, is like you would rather not work as much, you know, and make more than that. Yeah, and you would think, um, you would hope that these clients would be, you know, kind of a better clientele, but you never know. I mean, sometimes rich people can be kind of assholes. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark said maybe paying off in a year rather than a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're only doing like a one-year loan, I, they probably would be like six grand. 
a month for yeah. or something or a two year loan. And then John says, I know I'm behind catching up. He said he'd pick the sex in the back seat over puke anyway and then ask if he could join in at the end of the ride. Well, what if they're uh, done? <laughs> Larry doesn't <laughs> respond to that. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, I, I should I should ask because I have like I go through an insurance broker. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, so yeah, you shop. Ask, yeah. I, That's, we should do that. We should find out. Yeah. How much commercial insurance would, yeah. would cost? All right. I'll, ch- I'll check with the, I'll go through USAA. I'll check with them and see what commercial insurance would be. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it'd be worth trying and just, just spamming Facebook groups like the local ones. Like, Hey, if you need a private ride, I'm, I'm available. You know, I don't know. I don't know if it would work in this market though. There's a lot of Dutch people around here that aren't going to pay, you know, I mean, seven hundred dollars yeah. for an hour ride. If someone's super rich, yeah, they're gonna be like, "That's no big deal." But yeah, but and then they're gonna expect you to have a nice car. I mean, they're not gonna expect to be to roll up in my Toyota Camry. <laughs> I I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're doing like high high end stuff, right. I can see that. But like, I think I think private rides, as long as it's a clean car, it's it's you know, a, not a rust bucket. I I think yeah. it's fine. So. Um, yeah, because I, mean, I do see people on Facebook here, uh, you know, several times a year. Hey, you know, does anybody know of a uh, company or a way to get to Nashville, you know, to the airport? Exactly. Because there is one shuttle that runs here, but they don't, they, you know, they stop at a certain hour. Yeah. You know, they don't run all night long. So if you got a late flight or an early morning flight, they're not, you know, not real good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it would be cool because I see that a lot too in those groups. Like I need a ride right now. And like, you know, Mm -hmm. but if you had that commercial insurance, you'd be like, all right, here's the price. Let's go. You know, you you just got to be ready to go. Um, Yeah. And it wouldn't be that hard to even set up a little website where they could go in and schedule and see your calendar, see when you're available. Yeah. And my guess is that in Michigan, the commercial insurance is pretty expensive. It's one of the (laughs) second or first most expensive car insurance in the state. So the traveler says $700 a ride. They can have sex in his car. (laughs) Yeah. hundred (laughs) percent. I'll do that all day. I'll be a moving brothel. (laughs) There you go. The Uh, hooker and the John can get in, pay me $700. You do your business. Hey, they can bring their little dog even. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh, oh man, just be gosh. like a rolling no tail motel. Oh on my wheels. gosh, that's hilarious. Uh. A verbal trademark, <laughs> verbal trademark. Yes, um, indeed. All right, so moving on, this is I've been seeing a lot. This this did not affect me. This is not me. Uh, but a lot of um, comfort is going away for eligibility for Lyft. Uh, but I mean. This 2023, which is a brand new car, right? But it's a Volkswagen Jetta. There, There's no way that can have extra comfort in the back of that thing. And I saw somebody earlier say something. They had a 2023 Honda Civic that was comfort. And I'm like, there's really? no way yeah. there's a lot of room. The comfort isn't more isn't just about having a nice car with good amenities. It's the room in the back of the seat. If it, Is it roomy? You know right. what I mean? Which my car, surprisingly, you look at it, it looks small, but I got no trunk room. and there's a ton of room in the back seat. Yeah. I mean, I can fit some giant men back there. Like <laughs> <laughs> now it's a little skinny this way, but they ha- definitely are like, you know, width wise, but length wise, right. like leg room, mm-hmm. ton of leg, of leg room, room. Yeah. ton of leg room. So, uh, I did not get the, uh, the kicked off the comfort train. Not that not I yet. do a lot of lift yet, but um comfort king larry's into the king stuff oh, you, well you missed the last last couple episodes yeah he's not in on that joke <laughs> yeah uh yeah extra comfort i know i mean i think the extra is just having the room um well yeah the teslas there's they're they're crammed in the back i don't know if it's all teslas but there's a certain couple models i think john is right the tesla three uh yeah it's it's very small in the back so they should be getting kicked off too. I mean, to me, it's all about leg room and, and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, okay, if it's got a nice, it's got like, you know, high tech stuff like a Tesla. Who gives a shit? That's not comfortable. Uh, Elon's probably got a deal with an Uber. <laughs> yeah, Hertz thought they did, but yeah, <laughs> they're taking a taking a big loss on that, a big L for big, that, big time, so. big time. 
Octopus tablet. If you don't have it, I don't know where you live, but where you've been living, you make an extra hundred dollars a month. Sometimes you can win money, uh, win cash, win games, all that stuff. It's basically a trivia. It's more than trivia. I, I, I dumb it down by saying trivia for your passengers. And this is like such an old photo. This trivia photo <laughs> hunt and speed match. <laughs> yeah, like it's um, like probably their original, like when they were starting out. And I just you know, grab the photo, but, the original mock-up. Yeah. The original mock-up, but, uh, Octopus tablet is a tablet. They send you with the charger and a cord and everything. You put it on the back of your seat. People play games, have fun with it. Um, and we've talked about it a ton of times. The link is in the description. Um, you, it's free. Like, why wouldn't you do it? Uh, go ahead and, uh, sign up for that. Uh, other than that, you just get paid for driving around and them playing games. And they love it, especially if you're driving at night. People uh, at night been drinking a little bit. They love playing trivia, and they love checking the March Madness scores on there because everybody's on their phones betting it on you know FanDuel and all these sports sites nowadays. So they're checking the scores. And, yep. Uh, yeah. Really, really, you know, would recommend the Octopus Tablet. Yep. The link is in the description. All right. Uh, so this thing, and I don't know. Did I save this picture? I'm having trouble. Oh, okay. So, oh, wait, no, I skipped. You skipped one. I skipped one. Well, we'll go back to it. So okay. this is a pizza that got delivered to somebody. Uh, uh, what does it say? I always get a refund when they do this. Uber Eats customer orders a little Caesar pizza. Pizza, I can't believe what the driver ends up delivering. Well, we know what happened to this, right? Well, on this one, they said that the guy was dro- delivering on a bike. Exactly. I believe. And he I, had it in a backpack. But I've even seen people not on a backpack carrying the pizza like like yeah, fold a, it up yeah like you're just walking yeah. around like with the handles like yeah What's because i think people? a lot of them cram the pizza in a regular uh hop um, hot bag but not like yeah. a pizza one right yeah not the pizza one that the, the big giant one but just a regular one yeah yeah you try to try to keep it warm so you jam it in there and crunch it all up so yeah you can either have a warm scrunched up pizza or a cold flat pizza right i and mean it, honestly I'd probably still eat that. Oh, I'd still eat it. <laughs> I mean, good luck getting a refund. As we've, yeah. I've said, Uber will say no, and you have to like beat them down to get a refund. But yeah, um, you got to badger them. You got to badger them. But yeah, just gosh, if you're a delivery driver, just just use a little common sense. Just like right before you're gonna drop stuff <laughs> off, like look at where the how the every time I drop off, look how do, mm-hmm. how the door opens. Yeah. Just make sure you're not blocking the door. Make sure you're you know just it's mostly the door stuff make sure you're delivering it in the right way and not you know on its you know side just common sense i mean it's not it's not hard to just think about if you were the one getting it delivered to you what would you want yeah yeah that's crazy do you ever uh have you had the little caesars the little pizza things that they're selling now they're like little mini pizzas like puff thing really? or whatever yeah no, i haven't even, haven't even seen them no, i haven't I had little caesars in in a minute oh, okay really oh gosh i feel like once a week we have little caesars <laughs> i don't know it's i i i enjoy it but all right larry okay see right your driver says scammer took 200 of earnings i this we had this one from last week we never um talked about it i don't think right yeah um, i mean it's a it's a familiar story that we've all heard about uh this lady was driving uh for uber i think and uh what was it yeah uber driver um she got a call while she was in the middle of the ride or in between rides that said she'd been reported somebody reported that she'd been drinking um they told her to pull over and had to verify some details and they're never going to call you and make you verify stuff like that right just when you get a just a phone call out of the blue so um you know she said that um said that she was worried that she was going to lose her livelihood. You know, they called said they were Uber support. So she said it, you know, it just felt real at the moment. So eventually after about an hour, they told her that she was, everything been cleared up. They got them for what they needed and she would be compensated $150 for her time, which they're never going to do that either. So that should have been a red flag (laughs) for the amount of money. Yeah. So um, she said once they got her Uber information, of course they cleaned her out. Uh, from what she had made that day. So it was almost $200, she said. Oof. It was her little girl's birthday, and she was devastated because she was trying to make money to you know, make, give her daughter a good birthday. So we, we go over this all the time. 
don't give out your personal information. I think we've all gotten those calls. I've gotten them several times over yeah. the years. Um, you know, they try to intimidate you and tell you that, that you're going to get kicked off the platform and, uh, they need you to give this information and you're this, you know, whatever that, you know, if it's, if it's really Uber, they're going to call back, uh, they're going to email you. They're going to do something official, um, that, that you can figure out for sure that it's them. Um, but don't just get caught up in the heat of the moment. Let somebody intimidate you into giving out your information. Luckily, this story did end up well. It says, uh, a couple in that her area saw the story and uh, they called and they wanted to make it up to her. So they gave her money to make up for what she lost so she could give her daughter a good birthday. So there are still good people out there. Yeah, there are. There are a lot. I think most people are good. We, we, they are. We just focus on the bad stuff, unfortunately. Yes, but It gets the clicks. Yeah, it definitely gets the clicks. So, yeah, such good advice. They'll never call you. And they're just going to badger you and make and they prey on the people that like they need that money, you know, and so they're mm-hmm. they're going to do everything and uh, um, make sure that they don't lose, you know, that money. So they're going to listen to the person. Mark, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. And I was like even going to help you out because Pete said it asked about a jump start, And I was like, oh, does somebody need a, do you need a jump start? And he's like, no, my brother did. But he's all right now. And I was going to help you out. So now I'm not going to next time you need it. He doesn't even go. know, probably know that I'm talking, what I'm talking about. But, um, so Larry, uh, we're talking about all oh, that bridge, that Baltimore yes, bridge. Yes, yes. So the Baltimore bridge, this is a story about an Uber driver who said that, um, she was, she was driving, uh, getting ready to head onto the bridge and said that some police officer stopped her right at the line mm-hmm. before we're going onto the bridge. Um, which, you know, that would have to, you know, just mess with your mind. She said that um, if her passenger hadn't been a little late and you hadn't, hadn't been a little late, come out to the yeah. car, they probably would have been on the bridge. Oh, so, you know, God. that's the one time that it worked out well that the passenger took a few minutes. <laughs> but that would be scary knowing that, you know, that could have been you. I mean, it very well could have been her if that passenger would have come out a minute or two sooner and they would have been on the middle of the bridge. And that's just uh, that whole, that whole, video from watching that bridge fall and that boat just going in there. That's just, uh, that's just scary. I know the day after that I had to drive, um, pick up my son up in St. Louis and had to pass over the Ohio river and the Mississippi river, you know? Okay. And both time I was going to those bridges, man, that's all that's going through your mind. Like, man, just, you know, this is, you think of that bridge, just the road, just dropping in front of you. And you're like, what are you going to do? You know? Well, even without this accident, every time I go over a giant bridge, I'm like, good God, if this thing, you know, but then I think, okay, well, we have good engineers. This isn't going to just break. You know what I mean? You but. would hope. You'd hope not. I mean, they talk about how old our infrastructure is in this country and how many bridges and stuff need replaced. Um, so, yeah. Wasn't there recently last year a a bridge collapse? And there was somewhere and people died from it. It was like an over. Uh, I don't know what happened to it. If someone ran into it or what, but there was a big bridge. It wasn't over water. It was like a highway bridge. And they like repaired it really quick or something like that. It was in like Minneapolis or, or Minnesota. Um, I know. I, I, I remember where you're talking about, but I'm, was it in, it was somewhere oh, warm. Why did I say Minneapolis then? That ain't fucking warm. But anyways, it was kind of yeah. the same scenario. It was somebody right. hit something and the whole thing collapsed and uh, it's some scary shit. Yeah, that might be right. Yeah. I 95 in yeah. Philly, Philly. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Jerry here in Bowling Green said he had one of those scam calls today. Just today. So it says they came from whoever ride the guide claiming to be Uber support security. They act like they cancel the ride for you and just start with questions. It's my third time, so I just hung up. Huh. Yeah, that's what I do, Jerry. I I usually just hang up on them. And, I've never gotten one of those calls. Really? I've gotten at least five of them over the years yeah i'm short of uh four thousand rides with uber and two thousand with lyft so i i just i've never gotten anything like that i did get a walmart scam oh really so the walmart spark scam and i haven't seen it in a while someone orders and i don't even know what the scam is probably just to get you to talk on the phone but they order like one banana but it's like oh, a, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, and it was, and I did it. I delivered that fucking banana, <laughs> and uh, 
for whatever reason, usually it's that they make up an address, but mine, the address was correct. It was a real address. Really? So they tried to call and I was like, fuck that. I took a picture of it and I got my $10 for shopping one banana or whatever one it banana. was. banana. Yeah. But they did try to call several times and I just didn't answer it. Yeah. So no time for that. Now, if there's no address, it's a little bit difficult to kind of deliver it because you're like, well, where do you put it then? Or do you just exactly <laughs> you just pretend that the house that you're at is the correct one? I don't know. But so, uh, yeah, that was I not it was. It, well, it clearly wasn't a warm place. I said um, if that was it bridge collapse, let's see, because it was just like last year. Um. It's going to drive me nuts. Oh, it was a tanker fire. Yes, that's it. June yeah, of last now. year. Yeah, it caught fire and it melted that under that, that overpass. Yeah, that was they, crazy. They thought it was going to take like a real long time to fix it, but they, they ended up getting it fixed pretty quick. Well, I remember watching, and I typically do not watch any freaking news like conferences or whatever, but I remember somebody the mayor somebody saying no we're working on this like right because it, it it that is like a main drag for philly mm -hmm. like it was gonna fuck everything up and he was just like it carries about one hundred sixty thousand vehicles a day yeah so he was like we're gonna and they, they i mean they work 24 hours a day to get it repair oh god i did see that that a day ago that it, it closed again because someone hit it and i thought oh that can't be the same one Really? <laughs> it's still being rebuilt, but it was open though, right? Oh my gosh. Cause I was like, oh, that mayor's like he's gonna get that shit fixed. <laughs> Why do I believe a politician? That's the exactly that's the I worst mean, part. So Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. This I thought this was kind of cool. This was in Gu yeah, Guadalajara. Uh how to order Uber if you don't have a smartphone. And so this is just a location. Um, super cool. I think that you know, in America, it's not the same. You know, the government if does subsidize cell phones for you so that pretty much everyone's got a smartphone. I mean, yeah. it, it, you shouldn't have any problem downloading an Uber app. But, you know, in, in Mexico, I'm it's not like that. So you, know, I, you must I don't know any of the process of it, but obviously you must order it there and you just wait. Right. And kind of like at a taxi stand and they probably come pick you up and. And again, it, it's nice that they have that because it's regulated, right? So you're not getting fucking ripped off. Um, and that's kind of what I like about Uber in other countries when you're traveling as a, you know, on vacation where you're not trusting some random Uber or uh, taxi guy that you can't speak yeah. the language. Like Uber is Uber. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It would be tough being in another country. Uh not knowing, you know, not speaking the language. They don't speak your language. Trying to uh, work, and and you know, you don't know. If I was in Mexico and some dude pulls up and tries to get me to go in the car, I'm I'm not getting in. You no. Know? <laughs> uh, when I worked, so yeah. When I volunteered in Mexico, I did a couple mission trips in Colima, and it wasn't like mm -hmm. it was like a poor community. Um, and they would always say, "Hey, when you go into town." Make sure you negotiate before you get into the taxi. Like there was no Uber when I was even going right. there. It was even before Uber was like. Yeah, but thing. you want to know what you're paying before you. Yeah. You go. Yeah, exactly. Um, you never negotiate afterwards because, you yeah. know, they kind of got you in the car then and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, so, yeah, Frank said it was open 10 days after the explosion, but they but they're not expecting to be done for at least. Well, yeah, I didn't expect them to be finished with it in quick, but they had it open in 10 days, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, that is pretty impressive. I mean, it's pretty impressive. So, uh, Frank says, I've told a lot of overseas passengers that Uber is exactly the same in other countries. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. You yeah don't... Same here. I've had some guys that were uh, here in, uh, in Bowling Green working at one of the factories that they were over here from India. And they said that's what they like about it. They come over here and it's the exact same as it is in India. And they've traveled yeah. to Japan and other places. It's just, it just works. I want, yeah, so they don't have to change currencies. So how does it, like, how do you know? So when you're looking at your phone, are you seeing it in American currency when you're in India? You know what I mean? Or are, are, right. are, are you paying Indian rates, India's rates? Or are you paying, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm assuming yeah. you are. So it would probably be like 45 cents for, 
<laughs> depending on where you are, you know what I mean? For American right. dollars, you know, because like everything's cheaper right. everywhere else than, than America. But seems like it. This is me being ignorant, ignorant. If yeah. I don't I don't know if that's even a thing or or whatnot. Yeah. But I definitely like how I would be so comfortable using. Yeah. Uber. You wonder what the, the, the you know, there's got to be a conversion. conversion. Right are they there. converting it? And then when you see it, is it like you're just American dollars? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, if I ever travel out of the country, which I do go to Mexico, vacation Mexico, but I don't leave the resort. I, I stay right on there. But um, I think we need to do some research. I think we need to take a trip. I think we need another Patreon supporter. We need to pay for this trip to somewhere. And I'm thinking it up. I'm thinking South Korea. I'm thinking there I want to go. go to South Korea. I hear Let's it's an it. amazing place to visit. <laughs> I'm sure we go visit Janet down in New Zealand. Yeah, that's true. We could do that. That's probably more expensive than South Korea, though. At least the no flight. Doubt. Maybe not. Uh, all right. Last thing. I did not save this photo because I, Larry, put it in here, and I forgot to do that. Did he share it in the group? He didn't. Well, doesn't matter. Uh, so, like we talked about at the top of the hour, the cash outs are um, changing to um a dollar 25 now my guess right. i don't ever do cash outs was it 85 cents before yeah i think so is i that think right? that was the last rate it was it, i think originally it was like what a, a quarter 25 cents and then it went to 50 and then i think it went to 85 and now it's a dollar 25 okay um yeah i mean and and you and i i know and most of the people that we know don't use the cash out option we just get paid once a week it shows up in our bank account which yeah. is fine for some of us but there are people out here who are living i mean literally day by day they need to go out and work so they can pay their rent that day or they can yeah. pay this bill that day and so they do you know they do cash it out i don't understand why you need to cash it out up to six times a day but yeah i was talking to my wife before the show and i was like well it's only 40 cents more and she was like okay well Let's put it in perspective. Let's say your monster energies that you love, you drink two a day, are 40 cents more. I'm like, okay, it's no big deal. And she's like, okay, so that's 80 cents a day. So you drink them every day, right? So every 10 days, it's $8 more for those monsters. And at the end of the month, it's $24 extra. Would you be Would you be a little fussy about that? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's not apples to apples by any means. But I guess if I was to do it that twice a day and end up being an extra $24 at the end of the month. I'd be a little, I'd be a little shitty about it. Okay. Janet says when they traveled in, in uh, the States, their Uber charges showed up in U S dollars. They showed up in U S dollars. But when you looked at the app and they quoted a price, did it quote the U S price or did it quote, uh, did it already do the, the, um, conversion for, from where you live that's what i was asking not when it f it posted but like when you were like quote looking at the app and yeah. saying okay how much is this ride gonna cost yeah me? yeah when it was you quoting go? you um so uh but yeah back to the um the cash out i i you know yes we used to cash out every weekend you know really? what i mean like he he used to do it even though he didn't need the money he would always cash out i don't know why so it's not just for people that are living paycheck to paycheck but hey next yeah, time no dude, definitely not steve Some next people... time dude ten dollars 9.99 is cheap anyways <laughs> um thank you steve uh yeah, thanks yeah. steve and um yeah, some people, you know, just like to cash out because they're worried about somebody being you know hacking into their account because you know that does happen. Yeah. Um or some people like if they got a <laughs> got a refund or something from Uber, they'll cash it out real quick so Uber can yeah. take it back. I, I definitely, uh, I don't think a lot of full-time drivers do the cash out. I, I think it's mostly these pop-in drivers that are like, I got to pay rent or I got to pay my yeah. phone bill. So they go work whatever it takes to pay that phone bill. And then they just right. cash out and then they're done. But sure. Um, so Janet says it showed in the app in U S dollars as hmm. well. So if I was in India, it would show me in, what is it? Rubles or I don't know what India uses. I think but, it's, um, I think it is rubles. I, or would, rubles. I, would, I would have no idea what that meant. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it's still, it's not 10 even now. It's now it's 99. It's still 99 cents. You're getting worse. You're going it's, down. It's, by it's worse. 10. Now it's, now it's 10 98. It's not even even. 
Anyways, what Steve's letting you know, uh, 1098 ain't cheap. Yeah, yeah that's for damn sure. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, for the month of April, I'm going to be on Steve's show at, on Thursday nights on the roundtable at 9 p.m. Um, very cool. So I'm looking forward to that. So it's 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 a great thing. He always has good people on there. Um, and he has, has some sort of kind of rundown like this. It's kind of just like just roundtable, like just talking about stuff. So. Um, so yeah, everybody tune in and hassle Jason while he's on the show. Of course. And the, the best part is, is I'm going to be streaming to our channel. So if you're going to see a live notification come up tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and you're like, huh, what's going on? But it's I'll be on Steve's show. So I, I encourage you to get on, uh, like the post, subscribe and all that fun stuff. So, um, yeah. And if you ever want to get into the weeds about all the uh, legislation, legislation our proposed legislation that's going on regarding gig work check out steve's uh sites he will get into the weeds with yeah. the best of them if he starts talking about it when i'm on there i'm gonna turn my fucking camera off and i'm gonna go take a shit no i'm just kidding steve i would never do that i did tell him though i had rules to go on there because like when there's six or seven people on a show like i can't stand it because it's too much it's too chaotic yeah. but when there's like three four at the max that's like the perfect amount yeah so all right larry uh what are you doing this week anything fun let's see um friday no saturday uh my wife and i are going to go over to the far western part of kentucky even further west than than here um over by land between a place called land between the lakes mm -hmm. between barkley lake and kentucky lake um we're gonna do some hiking over there and then we're also going to a place called patty's 1880 settlement where they have really good food and the gift shop and it's all set up like it is you know kind of in the 1880s so, oh very cool yeah that, that should be fun we're looking forward to that and then like i said taking care of my help you know help my son recuperate uh probably do some driving this weekend as well yeah yeah, we're. I'm not doing much. I'll probably do some driving. Uh, I know we're celebrating Easter this Saturday because my wife worked last Easter. Mm -hmm. Easter, <laughs> yeah, and last stuff Easter. Like that, but <laughs> Easter, uh, I forgot. Monday is is the eclipse. It uh, is. We're we're like ninety six percent totality here oh, in Bowling Green. You're we're so ninety four. Yeah, we're close. We're right around there, ninety four, ninety six, something like that. So you have might have to drive about an hour uh, north northeast of or northwest of here um to get into totality oh but so the, so that was supposed to be a little cloudy today but not or yeah. on monday but now it's just partly so we might oh, be able yeah, to they're see saying it. that's gonna be cloudy here so there's gonna be a lot of disappointed people who made big giant trips and maybe for nothing well but. my the district the day uh the last day before spring break they sent out an email to remind kids that because during that time is going to be dismissal for a lot of kids and to not don't be stupid and look up at the sun basically you know yes. what i mean so yeah get, get get you some uh get you some eclipse glasses for sure well and there's some scam ones going around too so i'm like it's yeah. just like what the fuck no yeah. one can don't buy them anything. from timu don't buy them <laughs> of course they wouldn't get here for six months anyway no so. no timu timu ships pretty yeah. good it isn't it no. oh. There is there's, there's another app that or or maybe Timu doesn't ship very fast. I don't know. There's one of them that is from China, but ships pretty good. But anyways, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So looking forward to that. Thank you guys all for listening. And yes. uh, as always, don't put up with anyone's bullshit. And we'll see you on the road. Good night. Hey, good night, everybody. This podcast is produced and edited by Hey Guys Media Group. Want to start a podcast? Check out HeyGuysMediaGroup.com.